free. Welcome back to So Bad It's Good, presented by Betches Media. Folks, I have been talking about this show now for the past week. I am addicted to this show, and I think you need to be addicted too. Now, I've known about Love Island for quite some time, but I am truly addicted to Love Island USA on Peacock. Uh, there's a group of contestants referred to as Islanders living in isolation from the outside world in a beautiful villa. They're constantly under video surveillance, so we see their daily lives. And the kind of hope is that they all find love. Now, unfortunately, we were dealt with great heartbreak this past week in episode 10 when fan favorite Hannah was dumped from the villa. The upside is that we get to speak to her today about her time on Love Island USA. We have the one, the only Hannah Smith. Welcome to the show. Oh. Yay! <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Hannah, I got to tell you, I truly am addicted to this show and I want as many people to watch it as possible. And it is so, uh, it's just so wild to have it watched you for 10 episodes and then get to talk to you because our experience watching it is so different than your experience. How are oh, you yeah. doing after, uh, after being let go on episode 10? I'm not going to lie. After being let go... You know, and coming back into the real world, it feels insane because when you are <laughs> in this villa, you don't know what day it is. You don't know what time it is. You're yeah. literally just with this select group of people and you get to know them very well. So for me, it was hard leaving because, you know, as you guys could see, we all grew a bond and, you know, I considered them my family. I mean, I learned so much about these people in such a short amount of time and, you know, I just grew to love them and they're going to be my friends for life. So that's why it was very hard for me to leave the villa because it's like leaving your family. You know what I mean? Like I miss I mean, them so much and you know, it was just sad. Like, well, I, I mean, I it was sad. Like it was sad for, it was sad for everybody. I mean, I was watching, you know, your cast reactions to you leaving and all of the tears, which must have felt, you know, I don't know if you went back and watched that episode, but it must have made you feel good because it really was this huge loss. And, and how you speak of it makes so much sense is that all you're there to do is form relationships. So it's not like on the outside world where we have so many distractions. You're there just with these people. So you bond so quick. You do. I mean, there's literally no distractions. You don't have phones. You don't have other people coming up to you and, you know, getting in your conversations, except for everyone <laughs> that is in the villa. And I mean, it's a very few select people that are with you in the villa. So, you know, you grow to just love these people. You're around them 24 seven. I mean, you're getting ready around them. You're showering around them. You're sleeping with them in the bed. Yes. Like, it's very real. You know, the show is not scripted. It is literally our real feelings, you know? And I told myself, I was not going to cry on national TV. I said, <laughs> I, I don't want to be one of those corny people who is like, no, oh, you cried. You cried. You cried. I, I'm not kidding you. I cried every single day. Literally the first day that me and Kendall got coupled up, I woke up and I was in the bed and he's like, are you okay? And I'm like, oh, okay. I'm okay. He's like wiping my tears. I'm like, I'm okay. I just miss my well, family a lot. <laughs> to let the audience know that has not watched yet, you can catch up with this at any time on Peacock, but oh, yeah. you were coupled up with Kendall. Yes. And Kendall has had an interesting road since you have left, but you were coupled up with him. And I don't know if you were aware that you had one of the first viral moments of this show because Kendall made out with you and you got your, he, he had full he had full Hannah Smith makeup all over his mouth, and it was the funniest. And he he looked up, and you know I don't think you guys know where the cameras are, and he just had like white makeup all over his face. It was hysterical. And that's the funniest thing is like you forget about all the cameras. Like this is real life to us. Like you're not thinking you're on camera. And I'm yeah. not gonna lie, I have been seeing some of the videos and about the powdered donut and everything. <laughs> Um, They're like, girl, do you not have own setting spray? And I'm like, my setting spray <laughs> must have not been good enough because <laughs> no, listen, hey, that like, it was crazy. It was love in the moment. But speaking of Kindle, were you truly feeling Kindle, or were you going through motions because of the show? You know, coupling up because I imagine in that environment, it, it you know, you you trying to couple up. Were you mm -hmm. truly feeling Kindle in the beginning? 
I'm not going to lie. I really did grow, you know, feelings for Kendall. So obviously, as you guys saw, me and Kendall got coupled up by default. He wasn't my original first choice. Koi was, but, you know, me and Kendall ended up getting coupled up. And then, you know, we're like, let's just have fun with this. That's literally how we started. We said, let's just have fun with this. Let's get to know each other. So me and him got to know each other very fast. And the thing about him and I that made us, you know, want to get to know each other more is that we both have such goofy personalities. We're very funny. We had so many things in common. So that made us drawn to each other. And we actually did start liking each other, you know, yeah. we told each other throughout this experience. We're here to meet everybody. You know, that was our one thing. We said, we're going to meet everybody. But, at, you know, at the end of the day, in, in the first, you know, stages of meeting each other, we told each other, you're my number one. I'm your number one. So we had very open communication. And then obviously, as you guys saw, Liv came in the bombshell and that did shake things up, you know, because he did have some long chats with her. And I was, you know, like, oh, OK, like, what's going on? But, you know, he would always come back to me and tell me, you know, you're still my number one. But he did let me know, you know, Liv is my type. I find her very attractive. We do have things in common. But, you yeah, know. Like, they, they both watch Star Wars. That was the big thing in common. They both yeah, watch like, movies. okay, great, you know. <laughs> you know, like, okay, cool. Like, I have a dog. You have a dog. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, okay, we have great. so much in common. We um, have so much in common. Well, it, but it is interesting. I think one of the aspects of the show is that you kind of have to or are encouraged to leave your heart open. So even if Kindle is there, you know, you might actually like somebody else. And we see that repeating out with a lot of people is that they are keeping their options open. How hard is that for you personally to keep yourself open? Because when you like somebody, sometimes it's like tracked like laser beams, like that's all I have eyes for. Is that a really hard element of the show? So yes, I will say that was a very hard element for me because I wasn't going in as it was a game. I was going in as this is my real life. You know what I mean? Like I yeah. wasn't in game mode. I was literally going in as this was how I am in the outside world. And in the outside world, you know, most of us only get to know one person at a time and that's how I am. And, you know, I wanted to just make a strong connection with one person. But when you're in Love Island and you're in this environment, you do have to you know, me, everybody, you have to keep your options open. And that was a little difficult for me because I honestly did start liking Kendall. And I was like, you know, I really like this guy. But as you guys saw, Hakeem <laughs> did come in. He, he came in and he knew. You tried to graft. You were grafting. You tried to graft for Hakeem. Come on. Ah, uh, yes. Um, Hakeem, Mr. Keem, <laughs> Lord, where do I even start with this guy? So, you know, Hakeem came in. I found him a very attractive, you know, we wanted to have a chat. Our first chat was so good. I mean, we honestly talked for like, I mean, I don't know the time over there or anything, you know, <laughs> but it felt like it was like a good 45 to an hour chat. And we just really got to know about each other. And we also had a lot of things in common. He was hilarious. You know, we just, the conversation just flowed so easily. So, you know, I went back to Kendall and he did look like he was stressing a little bit, you know, he was stressing a lot. And about, we see him <laughs> stressing now with a new person, which is so interesting to watch that. But it is interesting is that then you had to kind of rebuild or build back up trust, trust with Kendall. But then hours later you were in like another game and a kissing part of the challenge with Hakeem. Do you regret that now? Okay. So the, I, I'll tell you behind the scenes, kind of how the challenge played out. Because, well, you know, the recoupling happened and then, you know, Hakeem went, oh, well, she was 50-50. And I was like, please don't ever <laughs> tell this man you're 50-50 with him because he he's going to fire you up. Okay. Yeah. But so, you know, we are presented with this challenge. And so on the girl's side, we literally went into the challenge. We said, the challenge is a game. It's supposed to be fun. It's going to be funny. We literally said to each other, let's not pick our partner. Let's pick someone else and let's just do it to be funny. So that's how I went in with it, to be honest. You know what I mean? Like to the viewers, it looked crazy. But how us girls went in, we literally said, yeah, don't take anything personal. Like, well, we can choose each other's guy. Like, it doesn't matter. We're just having fun. So everybody kind of got in my head and they're like, choose Hakeem. Like, tell him, I know you miss me. Like, it'll be so funny. So what did I do? <laughs> Hakeem, I know you miss me. Oh, yeah. that uh, The girls thought it was funny. The guys well, were like, what is wrong with you? But see, and this is what's hysterical about this show is that we see how 
sensitive the men are. Like oh everybody says God. women are so sensitive and overly no. emotional. I would argue that the men in Love Island USA is a perfect example, way more sensitive. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the, I mean, just as many, if not more tears than the women. And it's really funny to watch. There was the one challenge where you guys got asked about your body count and men were like, oh, that's too much. Oh, that's too crazy. And I was like, I was who like, you are you to have... judge? Seriously, it's like you guys are judging us, but we should be the ones judging you guys. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, I think us as the women, we had all pretty respectable answers. You know, some of the guys yes. had some out there numbers and stuff like that. So I was like, for you guys to be acting so crazy to us, we should be acting crazy to you. But we were like, you know, we didn't know you guys in your past. We can't judge you. Like what you did in the past is the past. You know what I mean? But yeah. these challenges, the men were more upset than we were. I mean, I they were crying. I was oh just my like, God. this is crazy. Like, <laughs> I don't know what to so do. Um, and Kevin was very oh. upset with me after the challenge. He told me, so we talked after the, the challenge and he was like, you know, you literally basically like slapped me in the face twice. And he's like, now I have a wall up with you, which I do understand. You know, I, I played it as it was a game and it was a challenge and it was funny. Yeah. But I do get it looking back. I'm like, I do regret it. You know, I shouldn't have done that. I get how it looks to viewers. I get how it looks to him because if it was roles reversed and he did that to me, I would be like, mm -mm. like you're done. You're cut. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's why the show is so good, though. It, like, it's so real. And these like, you guys are so emotional. Um, also, there was a game where it got revealed. I think the most you have ever spent on a man was $20. Is that correct? <laughs> yes. And I will tell you, I have never had a boyfriend. You know, I... I so that's why I was like, to be honest, twenty dollars was good in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was great. I mean, very affordable for you. Did you like my answer? You know, got him, I, got him some snacks. You know, I could have yeah. got him a happy meal. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, I mean, that you brought up something interesting though, because you would uh, just for the audience knows she has never been in a full blown relationship before. And do you feel going into Love Island, which is all about relationships? Do you feel that maybe that hindered you a little bit because you are not used to having like full blown relationships? So all of a sudden you have people like, you know, that have, you know, a history of relationships and you're coming in kind of new in a sense. Do you feel that hindered you at all? Yes. Well, to be honest, you know, I'm not used to being vulnerable with someone. You know, I have a lot of trust issues and it is hard for me to open up. So going into this experience, you know, with basically everyone around me that has been in a relationship, you know, I learned to open up and be vulnerable. And, you know, it was scary. I'm not going to lie, because, you know, I don't want this person to know that about me, but it's like, if you want to make a real connection with somebody, you do have to open up and you do have yeah. to let them know about your past and your traumas and what you've been through and why you are the way you are. So, you know, I'm, I'm very happy for the experience. You know, I think going forward for meeting someone in the outside world, you know, I know just how to be vulnerable and how to open myself up questions to ask, you know, what I want in a guy now. So you know, I think it uh, all was helping me, you know, I didn't find way, in Love Island, but I'm still looking. <laughs> well, listen, you're, you're in North Carolina now. So mm -hmm. Fiji to North Carolina. I mean, what a, what a wild last couple of weeks you've had. I mean, and I know you work in like bottle service and that, that kind of thing. I mm -hmm. mean, do you go right back into your normal life? And like, will you go, I mean, people are going to know you. People are going to start while they watch this show. I, I mean, you probably have a flood of DMS of people asking you out. How quickly will you consider dating in North Carolina right now? Uh, I'm not going to lie. You know, going from the villa to going back in the real world, I've only been back home in Charlotte for one day now. I cannot lie to you. My phone has been blowing up. I don't even know how to like look at the phone. You know, I'm kind of trying to take a step back. I'm like, somebody help me, please. I don't know what to do. It's, it's insane. I mean, I literally went to go with my mom yesterday to go get ice cream at just like a lo local ice cream shop. Literally looked at my phone, got a DM. Hey, not sure if this is you or not, but I think I saw you in this ice cream shop with your mom. And I'm like, no way. Yeah, that was me. Um, I mean, it's crazy. I, I honestly, you know, I'm kind of taking it day by day. It's very overwhelming. Um, I still don't, it hasn't processed me that I actually was on Love Island. I literally just felt like I was 
on vacation hanging out with my friends and eating snacks to be honest like that's really how i felt like you know i built such a great connection and a bond with them and I, they're my family now you know that's my friends forever but it's very weird to me you know i'm not gonna lie yeah. I've, had, I've had some anxiety coming out of this and of course you know, I, I don't know how to navigate it you know i'm just taking it day by day step by step you know no I, I mean you're you're doing everything that you need to be doing but i thought you know, it was so interesting to actually go back to your normal life after you've been in this kind of amazing heightened experience. And just to take the audience through some basic questions about Love Island, you know, you basically are there every day. You're out there in the sun. Uh, you, What time do you wake up? What time do you go to sleep? Does it change every day? Do you even know what time I, it is there? I couldn't even tell you what time we wake up or we go to sleep, to be honest, because we don't have clocks. There's no sense of time there at all i mean we wake <laughs> up when the sun comes up and we go to sleep when when the sun goes down i mean i i couldn't tell you the times i have no idea you you don't know anything you don't know the day you're what you don't know what day it is you don't know yeah. what time it is i mean you don't know anything you're just there literally living in the moment <laughs> now do they stock the fridge with foods that you like like do you just get a basic allotment of foods everybody's curious about what you guys are eating on this show I'm not going to lie. The food, I was definitely <laughs> missing food from uh, Charlotte. I was wanting to go to Steak 48 so bad. I was like, please give me a steak. Please give me a steak. Give me Chick-fil-A. Give me something. But, um, I mean, honestly, in our pantry, we had a lot of gummy bears. We had some chocolate <laughs> bars. Oh, you good. Know, we had some chips. That's mainly what I was eating. We had cereal. We had some granola bars. In uh, the freezer, it was stocked up with just frozen fruit to make smoothies with. You know, there was some protein powder. Um, we had eggs, bacon. We had toast, like okay. cheese to make grilled cheeses. So honestly, just kind of your basic foods. We had an assortment of milks, you know, electrolytes, you know, some drinks basic and stuff things. like that. Water. It was very yeah, well, yeah. Wouldn't it be great if you're like, no water. There's no water there. No, we don't all. supply water here. <laughs> you can have some um, electrolytes with no water. Uh, so the yeah, cast it itself, so the the cast itself. Who would you have chosen to uh, partner up with? Like, who would you? Who did you wish that uh, you know? Kindle aside, that you would have liked to have partnered up with, or coupled up with, or even new people. Because I don't know if you're continuing to watch the show after you've been exited. Um, to be honest, the newest member, the newest bombshell that just came in, Miguel. I would have loved to got to know him more. You know. Miguel, when he came in, he knew what he was doing. Oh, this guy's a player, you guys. This yes. guy is a sweet talker. He's a yes. player. He's very good looking. He's got the tattoos on his chest. Every girl's head was turned. <laughs> and this this poor Kindle is in the middle of a triangle right now. He's already pouting. And I mean, this guy is like dominating, but you would have also liked to have been coupled up with him, right? Yes. I'm not going to lie. Miguel, when he came in and we took our blindfolds off, I was like in <laughs> shock. I was like, who is this man? I literally prayed to the Love Island gods that day too. Like, Please send me a fine man in the villa. And just Miguel just popped up out of nowhere. And I was like, thank you, Love Island gods. Just, no, I I felt bad for all the other guys. You could tell they were like, oh, oh no. Oh they were no. Sweating. The men yeah. were sweating. This guy came in. I mean, he was sexy. He had a swag to him. He knew how to talk. He yeah, he sweating. knows it too. He knows. He I mean, knows that's it. why. Do, he well, knows do you it. go back and watch your episodes or even are you still watching these episodes? Like, are you current? Are you going to keep watching or is it too personal? <sighs> I'm not going to lie. I've watched bits and pieces, but it's very personal. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. I lived this. So it's like kind of reliving my life over. So I have watched bits and pieces, you know, I'm up to date on, you know, what just happened with the new recoupling, but there's things that I haven't seen, you know, I've, I've missed some bits and pieces and it's going to take me time to fully watch it and to process it because it is crazy. I mean, it hasn't really hit me like what I was really on low violin. Like that's me. I mean, yeah, I, that's how it's I feel. Not a well, uh, I mean, speaking of that, though, how did you actually wind up on the show? What was the audition process? You're in North Carolina. How are you approached to be on Love Island? Um, so I was actually approached on Instagram by a casting director. They reached out to me 
uh, through my DMs. And I just, I, I remember it vividly. I was visiting one of my best friends in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And I'm just like, you know, checking my DMs like everybody does. And in my request of DMs, I'm getting this DM like, hey, would you would you want to go on Love Island? And I, I literally thought it was a joke. I thought somebody was pranking me. And I'm like, go on Love Island. Like, what? <laughs> and then, you know, they're, they just asked me a lot of questions. And honestly, the process was so long. I had to fill out an application, had to send in a video, you know, basically, you know, let them get to know me. You know, it's just a very long process. I will say that. But I mean, here yeah, I am, to, you know, I, I mean, made they, it. They they probably have to go back into your like whole life about like oh, yeah. how you view relationships and stuff like that, which is so fascinating to me. Um, I want to talk also about the other castmates. I'm, I'm particularly interested in your opinions on Rob and Leah. Okay. <laughs> what? Because yeah. Rob, you guys, by the way, Rob is a snake wrangler. <laughs> he has the snake tattoo. You cannot read this guy's face. It is so weird. And then he got so upset. He totally gaslit Leah the other day, and then he jumped in the pool. He hid from the cameras. It was one of the weirdest things, but I cannot stop crazy. watching this guy. You were there. What was that like to see that? It was insane. Like, to be honest, in real life, I was like, this man literally is like hiding underneath the pool. Yes. Like, what's wrong with Buddy? Like, is he okay? Like, <laughs> I'm actually concerned for the guy. Like, he, he started scaring us. I mean – it just kind of got into like a heated thing. And, you know, of course we don't want to overstep our boundaries and like go see, but at the end of the day, we're all friends with everybody and we're concerned. I mean, it got very heated and, you know, Leah actually ended up sleeping outside and, you know, Rob slept in the room and Serena ended up, you know, sleeping with Leah outside. But I mean, they're, they're dynamic. It's crazy because they started off with such a strong connection. I will say yeah. they were the couple that I felt had the strongest bond and connection. You know, they just had so many things in common and they just had so much fun around each other. So the fact that everything, the tables just turned and everything just kind of went to shit, to be honest, it... It was crazy. You guys, it's crazy. It, it's crazy. This Andrea girl came in, one of the bombshells, and then, you know, got with Rob, and then that upset Lee. It, it, it was wild. And then, I mean, this was after you left. I think they, you primed everybody to start crying, but then Andrea <laughs> got voted off, and then the S hit the fan. Rob started crying. All the guys were starting crying. It was, we didn't have you there to get in between and <laughs> broker peace. It was the wildest thing I'd ever seen. Did you see clips of this? I, I, I did see clips of this. That I mean, it was crazy. Rob literally was going insane that Andrea got, you know, the girls voted her off. I mean, that man, the fact that he was like thinking about leaving with her, I was like, is he really going to leave with her? Oh, I, mean, I was like, there's no way. I was like, he's going to leave for like 30 seconds. And then I was like, he thought about it. And then he, I was so funny. <laughs> but I, now, I was like, I don't know how this is going to play out because honestly, he's very unpredictable. As you can see in the show, and as I saw in real life, you know, one minute he had such a strong connection with Leah and then. Andrea comes in as the next bombshell and literally everything just switched up within yes. literally five minutes. But that's how Love Island is realistically. You know, you can be having a great connection with someone for five minutes over here and then boom, you know, they go off and chat with somebody else and that's it. You're done. Your connections, you're, you're done. You're over. Would you, if you were still there, encourage Leah to actually entertain getting no. back with no. Rob? Okay. no, no. As we can see, it just, it's not working. You know what I mean? Like, yes, they're both great individuals. Rob does some things that are kind of, you know, makes me question because Leah is my girl. So I have to say, please, please don't, please just leave it in the past. Please bring Leah, a bombshell for my, for my girl, you know, Leah started, Leah started liking Connor. And then all of a sudden Connor's too nerdy for him has too tight of jeans. You guys. And I Leah's like, I, I need a little bit more of a bad boy. I was like, Leah, what are you doing? This is why love Island is such a show to watch. You guys can never <laughs> trust your emotions on this show. Uh, who is your bestie? Who is your bestie in the, uh, the villa? So Liv was my number one best friend, but Leah would, I would say would come in second. Liv and me together was so funny. You literally never knew what you were going to get from us. Everybody in the villas would say, 
Liv and Hannah are the craziest girls in here. Like they're the life of the party. <laughs> we would always be like, where's the tequila? Bring us the tequila. We want a party. <laughs> like we just wanted to have fun. All we did was joke around and laugh. We were in there. We literally were like, when we come outside on the outside world, we're literally going to make a show called the Liv and Hannah show and just be funny and crazy. <laughs> Do you hear that, Peacock? You can have the Live and Hannah show. <laughs> Live and Hannah show. You will be very entertained. What do you think of uh, Kaylor and Aaron? They have managed oh. to still, they are still together as mm -hmm. of last night's episode. Mm -hmm. Their hands are all over each other. I thought Aaron was going to potentially stray, but that didn't work out. Uh, but I mean, by the way, talking about sensitivity, Aaron was very upset when Kaylor was like kissing another. I mean, what do you think of their relationship so far? I have to say, now being around everybody and seeing everybody's relationship, I have to say, Aaron and Kayla have the best. I, I, I think they're gonna, I think they're gonna last in the long haul. To be honest, just being around them in real life, they are so goofy and comfortable around each other. You know, they just bring each other up, and you know, they're not afraid to be themselves around each other. You know, then when they say on TV they are best friends. I mean, in real life, they literally are best friends. They they fart around each other. Like, I'm not kidding. I'm like, seriously, they're they're a little too comfortable around okay, each you, other. Like, they are see. they are very comfortable around each other. You sold me. Okay, they're yeah, very comfortable. They, they're very, I will say they I see them lasting, and I really hope they do. They're both great friends of mine. And you know, just seeing them in real life, I always tell them, I'm like, this is what I want. I want what they have. Aaron and Kayla have such a cute relationship. You know, well, I want to be that it, wait, we, got, we got a long summer to go. We don't know what happened. So hopefully they work I out. I hope for them. Is there anybody while you were there that you wish, not you, but like wish had been coupled up that you're like, oh, this would have been a good couple. I wish mm -hmm. they actually got put together. Huh. That's tough. Because to be honest, I felt everybody was coupled up how they should have been coupled up. You know, yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, like to be honest, there's not really anybody that I would say. You know, I wish they would have been together because I feel like everybody, you know, got to meet each other and everybody kind of gravitated toward, you know, who they liked the most and who fit with them the best. So honestly, yeah. I feel like everybody's couples kind of made sense. Um. I could talk to you all afternoon, but as we wind down, I've got a, just a couple more things for you. Um, Ariana Maddox, we are huge fans of her oh, over on this show and everywhere. What was that like to watch her crush it as a host? Was that uh, very, uh, was she great? Ariana is so beautiful. I mean, every time we saw her, we were in shock. She is like a little, literal Barbie. She is so beautiful. She is so nice. I literally love Ariana so much. I, Cannot say anything bad about oh, her. Oh, she's too. a she's a huge fan of Love Island she even is, before she, she got is. the gig. So you can you can tell she's in it when she's watching oh, you guys. She, I mean, uh, it's she great. knows what she's doing. I mean, she was very hands on, and you know, she wanted to know all about us and get to know us personally. And I, I love Ariana. I mean, I I can't say you know yeah. so many great things about her. She's beautiful. She's funny. She's fun. She's connected with the show. You know, she's actually getting to know us in real life and, you know, see our relationships play out. So that's amazing. Yeah. Um, they, they chose good. Ariana was the right. Very, choice. very good. Um, uh, very good I choice. know you've only had a day being back home, mm -hmm. but have you thought about anything that this experience so far has taught you? I mean, just cause I mean, even just how men and women interact, like, I don't know if it kind of revealed any great truths to you so far. I mean, to be honest, I've learned so much, you know, just from my experience, I came back, you know, wanting to meet someone in the real world, I'm ready to be vulnerable because, you know, in this experience, I was not comfortable being vulnerable, but you have to, when you're in this situation, you have to open up. And so I will say, you know, I grew so much as a person. I know what I want on the outside world. You know, I know what I have to offer. I know what I have to bring. And, you know, I'm just ready to see what's in store for me, honestly. Yeah. By the way, your chat, you, you know, your chat skills have got to be like top tier now. You and are used to being over chats. I will tell you, I'm like, would you like to go for a chat? <laughs> Can I pull you for a chat? <laughs> would you like to talk to me? <laughs> um, uh, and then finally, since this is a pop culture show, what are you listening to? What are your favorite shows on the outside world away from Love Island? What do you like? Um, I really like like comedies. I like funny shows. I do love reality TV. I'm not going to lie. Before I went in, I was watching Too Hot to Handle, which was very <laughs> entertaining. And I also was watching Perfect Match. 
But, you know, I really like watching like comedy movies, like, you know, and I, I love sexy red. <laughs> like anytime I was like, can you play good and sexy? <laughs> like, can I hear a little good and sexy? <laughs> well, so, by the way, you probably can't play music on the Island, right? Like oh you, we gosh. hear music nonstop, but you I have your phones. Dying. The phones probably, I mean, do the phones, like you can't connect with the outside world. So no. are the phones just there so you can take pictures of each other? Yes. So the phones, you cannot contact the outside world. It's not like a real telephone. You know, you can take photos on your phone. And then if you get a text, so, you know, when they're like, I got a text, <laughs> you'll get a text on your phone. So that's, well, by that's the way, that's a perfect, phone. perfect way to end this. Can you give us your best? Uh, I got a text. <laughs> oh my gosh. I hated getting texts, but I'd be like, I got a text. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hannah, this was such a delight to talk to you. Please. Good luck with everything. I hope to talk to you again. I can't wait to see what the future holds for you. Thank and I'm glad you. that your heart is still open for love. And you guys, Love Island USA, every night on Peacock. You got six nights a week of amazing programming. And we'll talk to you again soon, Hannah. Thank you so much. <laughs>